Hello, welcome back. This is chapter two. And in this chapter, we're going to get into one of the more fundamental components of EKG interpretation, the electrocardiogram, more specifically, the ECG paper or EKG paper. You may hear ECG and EKG kind of thrown around interchangeably. That's because ECG stands for electrocardiogram with a C, which originally heard and invented in Germany and the Deutsch speaking or spelling is electrocardiogram with a K and also ECG almost sounds like EEG and that was confusing for some people or that there would cause confusion. So they just went with EKG, which is very common now for people to say EKG. So you hear them use interchangeably. They mean the same thing. And a 12 lead ECG is a 12 lead EKG. It's the same thing. All right. With that said, Let's talk about the EKG paper or the ECG paper. And it's always going to be the same in the sense of a very similar looking graph. I like to use six second strips. That's what this is. And I'll explain that in a second. What you'll notice is a grid made of bold lines and lighter lines. And they create large and small boxes. So if I were to zoom in here you see this bold line, large box, which ends up being five by five small boxes. Each small box is one millimeter. So this box is five millimeters by five millimeters. One small box. So this small box down here, one of those small boxes. We, when you're looking at an EKG paper from left to right, you're talking about time. When you're looking up and down, you're talking about voltage. So in time, one small box is 0 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds for one of these small boxes. Okay. With that said, since you know that the large box is five small boxes by five small boxes, then we know that five small boxes or one large box in length is gonna be this multiplied by five or 0 0.20 seconds or 200 milliseconds, okay? It's important to remember that. All right. So the time component is very important with EKG interpretation. The voltage component, it's important, but it's not nearly as important as a time component. When it comes to voltage, 10 small boxes or two large boxes in height equals one millivolt, one millivolt. So every small box would be 0 0.1 millivolt. So here's a much cleaner representation of what I've been saying. So we've zoomed in on, on a one single large box, and you can see that it's five small boxes, one, two, three, four, five, by five small boxes tall, one, two, three, four, five. And what you'll notice is it says here, one small box is 0 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds in length and time and duration, where one large box is 0 0.20 seconds or 200 milliseconds. And there's a large box is five millimeters by five millimeters, meaning every small box is one millimeter. Going back real quick to this large piece of paper, I said, remember I said it was six seconds. How did I get that? If I know every large box on this graph is 0 0.20 seconds, then of course, one second will be five large boxes, right? So if you look at these lines right here, you see those lines that come up past the grid, those are showing us every second. They're five large boxes wide. So this is one second. This is two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So we have six seconds for this EKG strip, and that is a very standard duration for an EKG strip. Here's another great image that represents everything we've said thus far. Just reviewing it, 
So this EKG strip is only three seconds long. Notice that there's only 15 large boxes from left to right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, making it three seconds long. And remember I told you that two large boxes in height or 10 small boxes is one millivolt. Again, the voltage criteria isn't super important, maybe a little bit more when you're interpreting 12 lead EKGs, but when it comes to rhythm interpretation, it really is a lot about these time components. And just to review one more time, every small box is 0 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds. And every large box is 0 0.20 seconds or 200 milliseconds. Sometimes when an EKG prints out, it'll print a little calibration mark. Most American EKGs are going to print with this calibration of a one millivolt standard calibration at 25 millimeters per second print speed. If the print speed is faster, it'll create a wider calibration. A common European print speed is 50 millimeters per second. So you get this double width calibration mark. Sometimes you have a half standard, what you see here in the middle calibration mark, which is often used if, you know, a patient has some sort of cardiomegaly or hypertrophy, it shows up on an EKG as very large complexes, which may make it difficult to interpret so that you can calibrate the EKG to half standard the size of everything. We should certainly talk about EKG calipers, and I do recommend that you get a pair of EKG calipers if you're going to be interpreting EKGs. EKG calipers are useful with identifying intervals, regularity, the width of complexes, and several other things, but they're very, very useful. And I'll give you some examples. So here are the EKG calipers being used to determine regularity. You place it between two R waves or two waves, let's just say on an EKG, and then you spin it on one point and if it matches up from here to here and then from here to here and it continues then we say the rhythm is regular so based on what we've learned about ekg paper or the electrocardiogram we can actually make a lot of determinations about regularity and we can actually determine the heart rate for instance we said that this was a six second strip we know that because there are five large boxes for every second and we have one two three four five six seconds because a heart rate is measured by the minute and there are 60 seconds in a minute we know that this six second strip if you multiply the rate on it by 10 you would get 60 right 60 seconds you would also get the heart rate as long as the rhythm doesn't change or the rate of that rhythm so just looking at these lightning bolts, let's say that's ventricular depolarization. So each lightning bolt is a beat, is a heartbeat. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lightning bolts, all right, on this six second strip. So you take that number, you multiply it by 10, and that is your heart rate. We have a heart rate of 90. We would also like to determine whether this is a regular or an irregular rhythm. And you would do that by taking your calipers and measuring from here. And if you don't have calipers, you could take a piece of paper and make two lines, one here and then one here, and then measure this space and see if it marches out with the rest of the beats. And in fact, it will. You have a regularly regular rhythm with a heart rate of 90. Let's do the same thing with these two rhythms. The top one, starts with a half of a star. So let's start at the second one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I get another half star. So we combine the two. So I'd say about seven times 10. My heart rate is 70. Okay. And then let's look at the bottom one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lightning bolts. Of course, we would take that eight, multiply by 10, and we get 80. But let's also look at the regularity. I think you should notice right off the bat that the space, let's say, between these two stars and these two stars, 
is very different. These two stars and these two stars. All right, it's very different. So you have a small gap, big gap, small gap, big gap, right? And the big gaps are all the same length and the small gaps are all the same length. So you have grouping. We call this a regularly irregular rhythm. It's regularly irregular. That means there's a pattern. So it's regular in the sense that it's a reoccurring pattern, but it's irregular because the spacing between the beats changes. If you look at the bottom rhythm, if we find two points on these lightning bolts and we measure them out, you'll see that not only does the space between each lightning bolt change, but there's no pattern. This is what we call an irregularly irregular rhythm irregularly irregular. So some rhythms are regularly regular, meaning there's no change. Some of them are regularly irregular, meaning that there's a pattern. And then some are irregularly irregular, meaning that it's more of a chaotic rhythm. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no pattern. It's just a completely irregular rhythm. That brings us to an end of this video on chapter two. I'll see you back for chapter three.